Good afternoon, YouTube people. It's Ferrer's Broken Angle Drive. Yay! This is actually a pretty common place for them to break, is inside the spindle. Uh, the problem is the spindle cable is wound in the same direction as primary wheel rotation. So every time the wheel turns around, it's exerting unwinding stress on the cable and they, they can snap like this or what I usually see is them turning into spaghetti uh, for a while there I had an angle drive that had uh, replaceable spindle cables and uh, eventually the replacements would turn into spaghetti you have to put a new one in uh, when I replaced that with the Houston drive that I have now um, I, I haven't had any problem. There's one problem with the mid-2000 Houston units. And once you fix that one problem, I found mine to be every bit as reliable as the Smith's Industries unit. In fact, my original Smith's Industries unit, the brass bushing wore out on it here. The Houston one is still fine. Uh, this here is a, a Houston angle drive. This is the angle drive. See, it says DeLorean.com right there. This is the angle drive that they were selling in the mid-2000s. This is not the angle drive that they're selling now. Um, the angle drives they're selling now, first and foremost, um, they have dimensional issues. Um, there's some fitment issues with them. They also do not have a grease fitting. And pertinent to our discussion here, um, these mid-2000 units are the plates that hold everything in place after you assemble it are held on with four dimples. So all you got to do is just knock the four dimples off and you can press everything apart. The new units that they're selling now, this is a 360 degree crimp. It goes the whole way around. So I really don't know how you would disassemble one of their new units. But uh, like I said, the old one, uh, all you got to do is just knock those four dimples off. Just use a screwdriver, a hammer and a screwdriver. Just go and you knock them off and they uh, can be pressed apart. I'll show that to you here in just a minute. Um, let me show you how you take the angle drive apart. Um, this here is the dust cap that's on the outside of the wheel. This is the big nut that holds it to the spindle and what holds the angle drive to the big nut is this little lock ring. So you reach in with a couple of picks, knock that lock ring off and then the angle drive will just come loose from that nut and you can work with it on your workbench. Now like I said, you knock these four dimples off and then you can press it apart. Now on Ferrers, the um, spur gear here still had the cable attached, so I used a socket, a small socket, reached, you know, so it could protrude through the socket where the wrench usually goes. And that pressed on the end of the shaft there and you just put it in your vise. And what will come off first is the plate that goes in the back. That'll come off first, and then as you continue pressing it out, you have this little um, tensioning type gizmo here. That'll come off next, and as soon as that comes off, your spur gear will just slide right out. And then you repeat the process for the worm gear. Knock the four dimples off, and then uh, on this one, I just use a, a quarter inch bolt um, to press it out. First thing that'll come off is the end plate. Notice the washer that they stuck in there. I think that was an assembly line change. And oops, not deep enough. Stick a washer in there. <laughs> and then you got the little tensioning thing, little miniature version of the other one. And then there's your worm gear. Now, while I got the worm gear here, the only problem I've found these mid-2000 Houston units are the crimps that they put in the barrel of the gear here to hold the cable the lower speedometer cable. You'll see Ferrer's got two deep ones and two shallow ones. You're supposed to have four of them the same size. So it makes a square shape to hold the square end. On my Houston unit, I had two shallow ones and two non-existent ones. So it just was barely grabbing that lower speedometer cable and one day it just got to the point where it would spin and wouldn't grab the square end of the lower speedometer cable. And the way you fix that, you drill a couple of holes in the shaft so the JB weld has something to sink their uh, sink its teeth into and then you fill it with JB weld and sink a square 
piece of square, one eighth square steel tubing in there um, and let it dry. And then when you pull it out, you'll have a perfectly square receiver to grab your lower speedometer cable. And once you do that, these units are fine. Um, I've had no problems with the gear teeth. Uh, everybody goes crazy over these gear teeth. Now, I do admit, they are very fine. Very, very fine gear teeth. But, um, the failures I see most often are either inside the spindle or those Smith Industries units. This bushing wears terribly badly. And what happens is when it wears, it allows your spur gear to drop away from the worm gear. So the problem isn't the, the gear teeth per se, it's that they can't intermesh because they've, they've dropped away. Um, the bushings, these brass bushings on the Smith Industries units really are not that good in my opinion. Uh, by the way, to check that bushing, what you do is you get a 21 drill bit. Just drop a 21 drill bit in there. You can hold it up, look for light to shine around it, look for it to be woggly. Ferris is fine. Mine was fine. Um, Houston may have actually done a better job on this bushing than Smith Industries did. Those are some fighting words, aren't they? <laughs> but anyway, um, check that bushing there. This bushing, I don't think ever goes bad because there's really no stress on it. Um, this bushing here is uh, dealing with all the stress of being inside the wheel, so it does wear oblong. And when it wears oblong, it'll allow the, um, the spur gear to drop away. And while you have it apart, put a straight edge across your worm gear here. Look, look for it to be concave. Uh, Ferris is flat. It's perfectly fine. You know, and I don't know if these spur gears ever wear out. But uh, while we're on the subject of gears, um, angle drives are all over eBay uh, for MGs and Jaguars and, and all kinds of, of cars. They usually put them on the back of the speedometer uh, gauge itself. Um, this is one I picked up off of eBay. I got this one because it has snap rings that hold it together. I said, that's a nice housing. And the damn thing was, I don't know how much it was, like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. Um, so I can put DeLorean gears inside this housing, and if I ever got to take it apart, all I got to do is just take off the snap rings and come right apart. Um, but do be advised, all these Jaguar and MG and other angle drive units are one-to-one -one ratio. For every turn of this gear, the spur gear, you get one turn of the worm gear. Okay, the one to one. DeLoreans are not one to one. They are eight to nine. For every eight turns of the spur gear, you get nine turns of the worm gear. Okay? So if you put one of these angle drives, I got it, you had to put a longer cable on, but if you put one of these on your uh, this thread, by the way, is exactly the same as uh, the thread on the, the DeLorean unit. The lower cable would go right on it. But if you were to put one of these on your DeLorean, your speedometer would read about 10% too low because it's one-to-one -one ratio. You could put your DeLorean gears inside that housing and it'd be fine. But if you're going to buy one of these MG or Jaguar angle drives, your speedometer will read about 10% too low. The only way you can get our speedometers to read correctly is to get an 8 to 9 um, gear ratio. So 8 turns of the spur gear gives you 9 turns of the worm gear. But that's that. That's how you take an angle drive apart. And um, as soon as I replace his uh, spindle cable, I'll make another video showing that to you and put it all back together. When you put it back together, just make four new dimples one, two, three, four, to hold your backs on, and um, that's that. Watch this space.